What up guys, it's time for a new weekly challenge and this time it's all about the full integration of the six pillars of self-esteem. That is what we've been doing for the last 12 weeks and in this video we're going to talk about the pitfalls but also very br briefly go through them all again. So it's time for another weekly challenge within personal development. Going into the six different pillars of self-esteem that the book The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem is all about. It is written by Nathaniel Brandon, the king within self-esteem. The book is awesome. It's not awesome if you just want to read something and think you're gonna get something out of just reading, but it is awesome if you're applying what is written in it. The journey I've been doing fundamentally changed me in the core but so the six pillars just to remind ourselves the practice of living consciously that means being mindful that means taking in your environment listen listening to your thoughts and emotions and what you're telling yourself that is absolutely key for everything that follows if you're not able to to pick up on reality and what's happening around you then nothing else can happen the next pillar for instance the practice of self-acceptance that means you have to pick up on how you're feeling that internal radar for what is going on it has to be switched on and it is a prerequisite for the next step the third pillar the practice of self responsibility that means owning up to your reality that means taking appropriate action as a result of what is going on and then you have the fourth pillar which is all about no worries, it's coming. Ah, mind blank. Self-assertiveness. Standing up for yourself, voicing your opinion, daring to be your true self and put that true self out there with clarity, with mm, super fun practice actually. Because this is the, the pillar you will get the most result of direct, directly. Feedback from the context you are voicing your opinion in. And it triggers to do it even more. And then we have the fifth pillar, the practice of living purposefully. And that is probably the, the pillar that will give you the most energy because when you find that internal drive, when you really clarify what gets you going, you have the energy source to just do whatever. And then we have the last sixth pillar, personal integrity. That means have, having a moral code that you stand for no matter the context. You don't back down if you believe in this, these values. But firstly, you need to reflect upon what you actually believe in. It is so, so important to, to have these values and really believe in them. But again, it, it requires some reflection there. And so those are the six pillars of self-esteem. And when you practice these, your life will change there are some pitfalls to doing this. Nathaniel Brandon in his last chapter talks about how you have to reach for that hero within. How you need to bring your better self every day in order to make the right actions so you can develop these skills that are required. It is about the actions. Taking the right actions every day in alignment with what you have to do to build self-esteem. It's not something that will happen autonomous. If you want to be mindful, if you want to shut down all the external sources that color your world, you need to do that actively. It's not passively done. There are two major pitfalls to developing self-esteem. First off, we have laziness. Laziness is something that can hinder our progress because it's, it's a comfortable state. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to take action. We can just watch a series, eat some food, and just eh, take the comfortable path. And sure, that is nice, but it won't make you grow. Laziness will never lead you to that path of development that you are all about, should be about. Of course you should allow yourself to enjoy life and be lazy in that sense, but it should never dictate the overall direction in your life, never. So stay aware of laziness. And then secondly, we have the fear of pain, the avoidance of being in that uncomfortable state. But the thing is, 
it is a necessity for growth. It is effort that is required from us to build self-esteem. Being in a state of uncomfortableness is it's not a place where we want to be natural, where our mind are doing everything in its power to keep us away from that state. It reminds us of all the situation when we have felt bad. It is when we are feeling uncomfortable, it's when we are pushing ourselves, when the real growth is really, truly happening. And that is also why my, not my, but the rejection therapy challenges that I've been doing every other week to also develop my self-esteem has been such a good tool for also building self-esteem because it is about going into that zone of uncomfortableness, going after the things that you truly want, things that aligns with your values and beliefs and doing it anyways. That is when the growth is happening. You need to be aware of laziness. You need to be aware of pain. Firstly, we're just gonna try to apply all these pillars at the same time. It's not something easy. It is something that should be in the long-term perspective autonomous. As I've said, it's always gonna require effort and consciousness, but the, the goal is to make them a supporting framework in our life. The six pillars should always be there, but that's why also why we have been focusing in on one pillar at the time, because you need that intensified focus, and we are gonna continue with that. But this week, all about thinking about the holistic perspective on integrating them. The second objective is the reminder of why we are doing this. We're going to use Tony Robbins' little method for how to find that core motivation. The Tony Robbins tool works like this. You are going to state 10 reasons for why you must change. What is the cost of not making this happening? If you're not going to go all in on building self-esteem right now, what will that cost you? Will it make you not be able to develop to the person you want to, not be able to, to have the career you want to? State your reasons. The second thing is to state 10 reasons for why you can do this. Don't you have the ability within you to do it? Don't you have a voice to be assertive with? Don't you have a drive to just be who you really are. State 10 reasons for why you can do this. And then lastly, bring out all the joy, all the good things, the benefits that will come if you develop true self-esteem. But so the idea with this little exercise is just to get clarity for the why, the reasons for why you should develop your self-esteem. And it is very important to do this. It is what will give you that extra energy and driving source when you're not in the mood for personal development, when laziness is all around you. And lastly, we're gonna do some sentence completion exercise as we're always doing when we're doing these weekly challenges with the six pillars. The sentence completion exercise means to finish off a stem sentence, like living consciously to me means. But this week we're gonna have one sentence for each of the pillar to remind us of what they mean. You do them in the morning and the, in the evening and I will have a full description down there in the description. That is it for this week's challenge. Maybe a little bigger than it usually are because it's such a broad span, more holistic perspective this week. But it is important and it is something we need to, to learn how to do. So if there are any questions, if you want to just make a commitment to me. Do that down there in the comments. Otherwise, I wish you a great weekend, a great day, a great whatever it is when you are watching this video. My name is Alexander Nielsen. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Bye, guys.